Let's go into the Word of God. Open up your Bibles. Yeah. Oh, let's do that better. Open up your Bibles. Yeah. Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. Every believer's called to do two things. There are a lot of people that say, well, I don't know God's plan or God's purpose for my life. You know, every one of us, we're supposed to walk out the plan of God for our life. But just you giving your heart to God, you being saved, there are two things that you are directed to do. Two ministries that you are called to, everybody's called. The young, the old, the rest of your life. There's always going to be two ministries that you're going to do. The very first ministry is the ministry of evangelism. Everybody say evangelism. A Christian does not keep his mouth shut about his faith. A Christian recognizes that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. A Christian recognizes that Jesus Christ has paid the price for all of humanity's sins, that anyone that believes in Jesus Christ will not be condemned to hell, but they'll have eternal life in God. And so a Christian, our Bible says that we have been given the ministry of reconciliation, bringing back the lost back to God. Every one of us is called to that ministry. I preach all the time on being an evangelist. The only thing that's keeping a person from being successful as an evangelist is how bold are you? Because God will show up in the midst of you talking about him and speak to that heart and that person will come to Jesus. But he first needs a witness, someone to recognize that he's real and declare about his life in front of man. If you keep your mouth shut, nobody gets saved. But if you open up your mouth and tell people about what Jesus has done for you, everybody will get saved. Amen. The only ones that get offended by the gospel of Jesus Christ are the ones that are running away from the light. Amen. Amen. We don't force our faith, our, our faith. We share our faith. Amen. That means when you begin to lift up Jesus Christ, people will want to come close. People will be drawn unto him. The Bible says that Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And so when every one of us is called to be an evangelist, look at your neighbor and say, hello, evangelists. And you have to be a witness. You have to be a witness. I'm not fighting another person's faith. I'm not fighting against a religion. I'm not fighting against a person. I am just telling people about who Jesus is to me. Amen. And, and when, when I tell people about who Jesus is to me, it gives them the opportunity for, to, for them to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior as well. Amen. Because Jesus came to seek and save those that are lost. Amen. So you are an evangelist. Say, I am an evangelist. Amen. And the second ministry that we've been given to is the ministry of giving. Amen. The ministry of giving. Amen. Every one of us, it's not about what we are here to take. It's about what we are here to give. Don't worry. We don't need that. What we, what we are able to give that changes people's lives. When we give words of encouragement... We give our time, we give our finances, we give our help, we give our strength. All We do it all in love. We do it all in love because we are ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that, the, that giving is a ministry. And the Bible also says excel in this ministry. When you can only give what you have. But it, when you begin to step into the ministry of giving... God begins to put in your hands more to give. And then you become an excellent giver. This is giving your finances, this is giving your time, this is giving your strengths, this is giving your abilities. And this is all part of the ministry. All part of the ministry. We are not here to minister to people. We are here to minister unto God. I am a servant of the most high God. I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my Lord. So when I give to someone who's in need, I don't give in the name of Kevin. I give in the name of Jesus Christ so that when he receives the gift that I have for him, all glory, all honor belongs to him. He owes me nothing, but he owes God everything. And the wonderful thing about being a part of the ministry of giving is, is there are people that have needs that are taking their prayer requests before the Lord. 
And God, you know, he's looking for someone like you that he could use. And so he will put in your hand the things that others need. And so you'll find yourself in a position where God will begin to speak to you about giving to somebody and you'll, you'll, you'll finally obey that voice being led by the Spirit of God. And as you are going to that person to give them what God told you to give, it was exactly or better than what they prayed for. Amen. Think about that blessing. Think about that blessing for a moment. What's greater, keeping hold of something of monetary value or knowing that you heard from God and obeyed God. I mean, you can always, you know, get more money. You can always, you know, there's always going to be something more. But, but knowing that you heard from God and you obeyed from God, obeyed God, wow. That means you're special. That means you are in a relationship. That means you, you're growing. In the things of God, that God can trust you. Amen. That's why every time I receive anything, I always ask the Lord, Lord, is this for me or am I holding it for somebody? I love it when the Lord puts a car in my hands that I get to drive it around until he tells me to give it, around, give it away. But I know that if I give, I'm going to get more. It's always like that. I've shared with you over and over, I, I gave a car and I received a better car paid in full. Amen. If God could do it for me, God could do it for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So the two ministries that everyone is called to is the ministry of evangelism and the ministry of giving. And today I want to talk to you about something that's very important. If you grab all this word, you, you will not be the same. You're going to see every, your faith is going to go to another level in Jesus' name. Amen. In Genesis chapter 32, verse 22. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Say that with me. I will not... Let you go unless you bless me. Verse 27. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, what is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed them there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Just as he crossed over Peniel, the sun rose on him, and he limped on, limped on his hip. Now, yesterday I was at the camp. There was a camp in Brownsville. They were, they were having a, a, an encounter weekend. About 120 people gathered for, you know, for three, three days of ministry, of transformation, of deliverance, just getting away to be with God. And they call it Peniel, which means to be face-to-face -face with God and, and to be changed. Amen. And so I was over there, and uh, they, they wanted me to do ministry. And, and it's funny, you know, because this happens everywhere I go. I, I, I think I might be able to preach, but most of the times I'm not even able to preach because the glory of God comes into the room right at the beginning, and we start seeing so many miracles and so many signs and wonders. And uh, the night before, me and my wife went to visit and just enjoy their service in the evening time. And as we were sitting, there was a man in the back, an older man, and we kept on seeing him grabbing his back in pain. And I wanted to pray for him. I didn't know what the order of things. I didn't know when I could pray for him because he was involved in the service. And so I didn't pray for him that on Friday night. But Saturday night, when it was my time to pray and, and to preach and minister, I saw the man and I said, before I, I do anything, I, I need to pray for that man. And I called him out and I brought him to the front. And I said, I saw that you had some back pains. What's going on? And he told me, he said, he said I have 
cancer that has gone into the bones. And the doctors have given me no hope, and so I've been suffering from this. And so I began to pray for him. And as I began to pray for him, all the pain began to leave his body. The glory of God filled that place. He was just broken before God because the Lord was setting him free. We cursed that cancer. And I believe that every port of death that was upon his life is going to turn around to life in Jesus' name. The man began to dance completely free. This man is an apostle in the faith, a man of God. And that one service, the Lord touched him. And I believe he's going to have a complete bill of health in Jesus' name. Amen. But then others started running and coming to the front. Another man, 20-something years of pain all over his body, set free. A woman, a teenage girl, that during the day when she was doing activities, she collided and broke her nose. Her nose was literally crooked and swollen. And as I began to pray, the swelling went down and the nose began to strengthen up. Another person who could not see, she saw everything fuzzy. Right after we prayed for her, her eyes just cleared up over and over. Another, you know, another miracle, uh, th- there, was, there was people that had hernias, big hernias that were protruding, and they just began to disintegrate and were set free. I mean, healing of after healing after healing. I had an hour, and the healings were so quick, but there still wasn't enough time. And, and then, then we just, we, we, we prayed over everybody. And, almost, you know, in the scripture it says, and all who were sick were healed. Many times that was one of the testimonies of Jesus. I've seen that many times. And all who were sick were healed. Last night, all who were sick were healed. And I give God glory. I know I'm just, I'm just the messenger. I'm just the carrier. I'm just someone who chose to be used by God. Amen? But see, this is not unexpected. When I was in in Africa, people who who had their bodies were broken because of heart attacks and their limbs would not work. I began to pray for one man. His his arm began to work. I mean, we had several testimonies of people who had heart attacks and their bodies were broken. The Lord restored their body. I could tell you story after story, healing after healing. You've seen it here at this altar of people who've gotten healed by Jesus Christ, that there's a flow of healing. I thank God for this altar. But it's not a coincidence. And, and, you know, it's very hard to find men and women of God that are carrying an anointing, you know, to bring healing. They'll, they'll, carry, they'll carry a word, and they'll pray, and, but they, you don't see instantaneous healings. But then you see them gifted in another area. Maybe it's a prophetic anointing, a preaching anointing, or, or a sign and wonder anointing. I mean, there's, there's so many different anointings that are out there, but every one of them is designed to bring glory to God and bring healing to the people. Amen. And these anointings are there to minister unto God. When I stand at the altar, when I pray for the sick... I'm not praying in the name of Kevin. I'm praying in the name of Jesus. Kevin can't heal anyone. But the anointing of Jesus Christ upon Kevin can heal anyone. Amen. Amen. But it's not a coincidence. You know, if it was just one service, it was a visitation. But literally, almost every service, like in a little while, we're going to pray for the sick. And if you're sick, you're going to get healed in Jesus' name. I'm expecting it. So why is it it's happening over and over and over? And this is something I wanted to, I wanted to share with you today because I want, I want you to, to, to grab a hold of this. And this is going to change your life. Amen. The reason why there's an anointing and there's healing and there's restoration And every gift that flows from this altar is because I got in a wrestling match with God. I grabbed a hold of God's word 
and I chose not to let it go. Every time you grab a hold of the Word of God and choose not to let it go, you will get into a wrestling match with God. Amen. What does the Word of God say in John chapter 1? And the Word became flesh. So you have to understand that the things of God, the kingdom of heaven, does not come with observation. I can't say it's over there, it's over there, it's over there. The Bible says the kingdom of God is inside of us. And what reveals the kingdom of God is faith. The Bible says the kingdom suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. That force is the force of faith. And when you grab a hold of God's word and begin to, to, to begin to apply it to your life and begin to declare this is the truth, this must happen, this, I, I want this in my life, and I'm not going to let it go, you begin to enter into a wrestling match. You're not fighting the devil. You're wrestling with the word. You, the word is pulling you out of your normalcy and pay, put, putting you in a place of God's glory, putting you in a place of God's anointing. And so every one of us have to begin wrestling with the word of God so that the word can be made flesh in your life. Amen. 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 And so it's the fight of faith. Everything is given to us through Jesus Christ. What qualifies you is not a title. It's not your education. It's not who your daddy was on earth. What qualifies you is the blood of Jesus Christ. Anyone that will believe God and believe his word can enter into the fight of faith and receive God's power upon their life to see the anointing of God evident in everyday life. But you have, to enter in, you have to enter into the wrestling match. You know, some of you, some of you have to go through some struggles to enter into that wrestling match. There are many times people don't, don't even believe in God's healing until they, the doctors give them no hope. Many people, they don't believe in God's blessing until the banks say no more money. And it's not until those times where you're stripped of all your, your, your securities that you finally reach out to God. You could get to the lowest places to finally reach out for God, or you could just begin to reach out for God for where you're at right now. You don't have to go through hell to get to heaven. The Bible says we're supposed to fight the good fight of faith. And every time we hear the word of God, every time we, we, we stand on the word of God, every time we desire the word of God to be manifested in our life, that's where you start the wrestling match. You know, because God will not hold back his anointing. He'll pour out his spirit upon you. He'll put his power upon you. He'll give you direction. He'll use you mightily. But are you willing to fight the good fight of faith? Because a lot of people, they say, oh, this is a good idea. I want to do this. I want to be like that. I want to do that. But, but, but then they go home and they push God aside. Instead of going deeper in the things of God, going deeper for the deeper things of God, crying out to God for more of his anointing, more of his power for him to use you, it's more of God bless me, God bless me, God bless me. You have to turn your, your faith around to God use me, God use me, God use me. And when you turn your, your, your faith around from God bless me to God use me, the blessings will come, but it'll be a flow of blessings through your life. Amen? Tell your neighbor, you got to wrestle with God. You got to grab hold of the Word of God in whatever situation, whatever area you want to grow in. If you want to grow in, in the ministry of healing, you got to grab God's Word and know what His Word says about healing. What Jesus Christ did for you, what, what that, is, that by his stripes you are healed, that the believer will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen? You got to grab all the word that says you shall not die, but you shall live and give glory to God. You got to grab all the word of God when it declares that he took all our infirmities and all our diseases. You got to grab those word and know it in your heart and begin to believe it in the name of Jesus. God, grab that word that says the believer will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And every day declare, I believe in the name of Jesus. And these hands carry the power of healing upon my life. You got to believe. 
I mean, this is not just something for the moment. This is, this, this, is, this is your reality. This is what you think. This is what you believe. This is what you confess. Stop waiting for pastor to call it out of you. And just accept what the word of God says about you. Amen. How many of you are sons of God? Hallelujah. And, and so you got to grab hold of God's word. You have to know it, believe it. His word is truth. So if his word is truth, that means everything else is a lie. If his word is truth, that means everything else is a lie. Hallelujah. James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 26. Go and put it on the screen. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Pastor, I believe that God is going to bless my business. Awesome. What business are you in? I haven't started one. I believe God's going to prosper me. Wonderful. What do you do? Nothing. I sit here and pray. You know, it's crazy because there's a lot of ministers that they're, they're, they're fools. They really are. Uh, these ministers, these are preachers, and, the, you know, and usually they, 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 they usually tag their name prophet because prophet, you know, allows them to hide behind words, whether they're words of God or words of man, but they hide behind words. They can't be a teacher. They can't be a, a pastor. They can't be a preacher because, cause, you know, those things require you, a reality between you, your relationship with God. But there's a lot of people that they call them prophet. And, and, and they, they'll, they, they will prophesy so that they believe that God's going to supply by the ministry of suggestion. So they might use a scripture, they might use a word, but they always have a problem. And they always have a need. And it's not a bigger vision. It's not something that God's declaring. They're just trying to exist. They're just trying, you know, you got to go get a job if you want God to bless you. Amen. Do something. Give God something to bless you through. Amen. 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 You know, I, I, I know a lot of, lot of great men, men of God, and they use their faith and they're blessed. But then I know other men of God that they'll try to use the ministry of persuasion just to get other people to, to bless them. If your blesser is people, you're serving the wrong God. Amen. I love you, but I don't need you. I love you. I love you very much. But you're not my blesser. He is my blesser. Amen. And that's every one of us. Amen. If you want God to bless you, you got to give him something to work with. Yes. Amen. Let me give you a scripture. The Bible says faith without works is dead. But if you read in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, turn there real quick. Deuteronomy 8, 18. It says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power. Everybody say Power. To get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. It doesn't say God's just going to give you stuff. It says God's going to give you power to get wealth. Amen. I, I, I remember, you know, I'd walk in a room and, and my daughter Crystal, so she's here, I'll pick on her. She said, Dad, go get me something from the kitchen. 
And I look at her, and I say, get it yourself. You got legs, and you know where it's, it, where it's at. It's in the kitchen. She could get angry at me. I don't have it because my dad didn't give it to me. I would have it if my dad would have been faithful, but my dad's not faithful to give it to me. That's the way a lot of Christians are. I would have it if God would have done it for me. I'd be blessed if God would bless me. If you just bring in checks, if you just bring in money, if you just bring in strength, then I'll finally be strong. And God's saying, look, you got legs, you got arms, you got a mind. I will give you power to get wealth. God will give you strategies. God will give you wisdom that other people do not have. God, God will, will give you strength and favor. He'll lift up your business where, where you will be the one that people want to do business with. But if you stay stuck, you're going to be like, I don't have it because my dad didn't give it to me. Everybody say power, power. power. to get wealth. And here's the thing about, about the power, and I'm talking about anointing. I'm talking about this is for healing. This is for, for, for to be effective evangelist, to be effective giver, to be, to be effective husband, to be effective father, to be effective whatever area you want God to use you at. When you know that God will give you the power, you have to grab a hold of the word of God and begin to wrestle. You begin to think, okay, Lord. How do you want to bless me? Lord, what, what, show me, give me wisdom. Father, show me the direction. Should I be involved in this business or that business? Should I be working there or over there? Should I get this education or not? Should I make this deal or not? Everything being led by the Spirit of God, growing your strengths, growing in wisdom, letting God raise you up to be the man that he wants you to be or the woman that he wants you to be. But you're wrestling with God. Oh, but, but, but pastor, I tried that business and it failed. It's part of the fight. Jump back in. Grab a hold of the word of God because his word will come alive inside of you if you don't faint. But pastor, I tried this and it didn't work. Try something else. I tried that and it didn't work. Try something else. I just want to give up. Why? Are you breathing? Yes. Keep on going. Just because it's been a little while. Don't give up. Keep on trying. Try something new. Be something you've never been before. Let God mold you and shape you. Amen. But I failed over here. Go over here. I couldn't do the business over here. Do something new. Amen. But I prayed really hard. I wanted this to work. God's blessing will be upon you if you don't faint. If you don't give up. You're going to see the glory of God. You might fall down seven times, but you get back up every single time. You don't quit. Why? Because the ministry on your life needs to come alive. The ministry of giving, the ministry of evangelism, the ministry of serving your God. He's not going to leave you in a, a condition where you cannot serve him. He's just shaping you and molding you. But I wasted so much time over here. But God was training you here so that when you step over here, you'll be able to stand strong. What you thought was over there was so big, over here is going to be even greater. God has a better plan for you. But you have to walk out your faith. You have to wrestle with God. Hallelujah. You got to hold on to that word. Hold on to that word. But Pastor, I feel like I'm, I'm at my end. Like I, might I might die. Don't worry. You serve a God of resurrection. He knows the call dead things back to life again. And you might not know why some things failed, why you weren't able to succeed in one area. But do not give up on the hope that you have in Jesus' name. You hold on to your faith. You hold on to God. You hold on to his word. You confess the, what you are believing God for. And watch how God will bring it to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, I have power, I have power. 
to, to, to create wealth. Amen. And so you apply that power to your business. You apply that power to a trade. You should be thinking about something. You should be dreaming about something. You should be applying it to something. None of you should stand still. If your dream is God's going to give me a job that pays me this amount of money and, and I get to retire at that job, you're thinking too small. You're thinking too small. Is it worth your life? Is it worth your life? I think one of the worst things I've ever seen is someone get in a job and then they get comfortable. They get comfortable because they get enough to take care of your need, their needs or just to, to, to go from day to day and never thinking about creating wealth. It doesn't say God gives you power to sustain. But pastor, you know, I'm, I'm satisfied. Why are you satisfied? Don't you understand that God wants to make you someone that will rebuke the curse of poverty over this land? But I got my job. Don't you know that God wants you to create jobs? Yes. Why are you selfish? Come on. If, you, if you believe that you are a son of God, I mean, you're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of you. Why, do you, why would you limit what God can do in your life? Amen. But pastor, I've never done that before. Good. That means you get to do something special. Don't you understand that God's calling you to a great adventure? But I know I'm good at this, but become great at something else. Expand your, your wisdom. Expand your knowledge. Ex grow. The Bible says the things that are hidden belong to God, but the things that are revealed belong to man. Learn something new. Even if you're the best, learn something new. You can always be better. You know, the, 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 the idiotic thing is, is people go to university, they get a degree, and then when they finally start working, they realize that everything they're doing, their degree did not prepare them for. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. And, and I want to tell you, it's, it's, a, it's a foolish system. I'm not against people going to university, study, learn, get every, you know, become doctor, become whatever you want to be. That's because you desire to learn. But you don't end your, your education once you get a degree. You're always learning. And we live in the greatest time. You can learn anything, just, you know, Google it. God will empower you. But you have to use your faith and believe that God will do that for you. The Bible says he gives you power to prosper. Everybody say power. power. To prosper. prosper. That's mine. mine. Given to, to me by God. My father gave it to me. I have power, I have power. to prosper. prosper. Don't get angry. Oh, there's not opportunities. There's opportunities everywhere. Yeah. Amen. Was it Jacob? God sent them to a, a land that was, that was in a famine, and God said, sow, and he sowed and reaped, ended up owning the city. God gives me power to prosper. Amen? Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, don't quit. Because the, the, there's, it's always going to be a fight. There's always going to be a struggle. You're going to want to quit. You want to give up. But you have to understand, you keep on going. Why? Because there's a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough. You know, a, a lot of times, a lot of people, I know a lot of businessmen that have failed over and over and over, but once they had that breakthrough, that breakthrough covered all their failures. That breakthrough, that breakthrough took them to another level, amen? It's not about the times that you fail. It's just that one time that you got to a place that you were supposed to be all along, and all the wisdom that you took from the past, you're able to use it today in Jesus' name, amen? Hallelujah. How many believe that God is the God of breakthrough? And so that anointing to, to be blessed, the anointing to prosper comes upon you. And once you understand that the anointing of wrestling with God to claim the things that you desire from the Lord, once you have that, everywhere you go, that becomes a, like a clothing upon your life. People will look at you and see what God has done in your life, and they will know you by that. They won't know you by the failures, but they will know you by what you have received from God. 
Wherever I go, when people hear about the ministry and I go, they, they, they say, oh, that's a man that brings healing. He brings the healing power of Jesus Christ. Why? Because I wrestled with God. I wrestled with God. I claimed my portion in Jesus' name. And guess what? I'm not satisfied with that only. I'm still wrestling with God for some new things. Amen. How about you? Have, are you increasing your faith? Are you wrestling God for higher levels of, of glory in Jesus' name? I'm wrestling God in the area of prophetic. I want God to use me more prophetic. I'm wrestling with God in the area of finances and prosperity. I want to grow more and more in Jesus' name. Well, pastor, aren't you content? If I was looking just at myself, I'd be happy and content, but I'm not looking at myself. I want to be someone that changes the curse of poverty over this Rio Grande Valley. I want to be a person that God will use to bless many nations. Amen. How about you? How about you? And so you got to jump in the fight and say, I'm going to wrestle with God. I'm going to find out what God says about me. I'm going to find out what God says about my business. I'm going to ask God for his favor. I'm going to ask for the Holy Spirit to give me direction. When I put my hand to something, I'm going to ask God's blessing upon it. I'm going to ask the Spirit of God to lead me. Should I do it or should not do it? I'm willing to say no if the Spirit of God tells me to say no. And I'm going to say yes to everything the Holy Spirit tells me to say yes. Why? Because I'm going for a new level of God's glory. I'm going to a new level of God's anointing. I'm not made to stay the same. I'm made to grow in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you're going to have your breakthrough. Amen. You're going to have your breakthrough. But here's the beautiful thing about wrestling. Here's the beautiful thing about using your faith, receiving the anointing of God. Go to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter. Oh, you're going to like this. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. Put it on the screen. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Amen. Or the Bible, another, another translation says, are without repentance. Once you've wrestled with God... And you received his anointing in that area of your life. Wherever you go, whatever you do, it will always be available to you. Amen. It will become a resource of life that you can always draw from. Amen. That's why I didn't have to preach and say a big sermon to see the miracles happen. I didn't have to have a big orchestra orchestra and praise and worship God for hours to see the glory of God flow. Why? Because I've wrestled with God and I know the anointing that he's placed upon my life and the call and the demand that he wants me to do. So I, I can expect these things wherever I'm at, whether we're in a church, whether we're in the street, whether we're in a home, it does not matter. I carry the glory of God for the ministry of healing wherever I show up. How do I know that? Because I've wrestled with God and I've received it. Amen. And it's not even about how good I am. It's about how good he is. But pastor, do you feel really anointed? I didn't feel anything. Did you hear? Did God tell you to do all these things? God told me a long time ago. I just keep, kept his word. And I have not let it go. And this is the area of prosperity to be upon your life. And here's the thing about it. Once you receive that anointing of God upon your life because you wrestled with the Lord, it doesn't just come. You have to wrestle. Let me just let you know. I can't fight for you. You have to fight for yourself. I wish I could fight for you and just say, here, it's yours. It's available. It's, it's available because it's in the kingdom. It's been given to you, but you got to take it by faith. By faith. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, you have the opportunity to live differently, to walk with God in a higher dimension. You have that opportunity. Everybody has, the door is open through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for his grace. But you have to take it by faith. Amen. And, and you might say, how do I know I receive it? And how would other people know about it? You'll start walking with a limp. When you walk into a place, people know that you've been through something, that you've gone through something, that you spent time with God, 
you got this limp for the rest of your life. He will touch you and change you. And you'll begin to walk differently. That's why the Bible says, we walk by faith and not by sight. I wrestled. I got the blessing of God over my life. I got the Man, when I see someone with the blessing of God on their life in a certain area that I want to go, that's the person I want to get close to. Tell me about this. Let me see. When I see Prophet David and his ministry are prophetic, I see him walking like this. I want to know from you. I want that anointing on my life. I want that prophetic anointing. When I see, I see the, the preaching of Amos uh, and he's walking with us, I want that anointing upon my life. When I see, I see the anointing of prosperity on people's lives and they're being blessed, I want to walk with you. I want to see. Why? Because I know you've, you've gone through some stuff. You and God have gone through some stuff. You, you, you've wrestled with God and you've won in Jesus' name. He touched you. He changed you. He's molding you by his word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It will change the way you walk. It'll change the way you talk. It'll change the way you act. It'll change the way you do. And guess what? Wherever you are, you will change everybody you are around. Why? Because you have wrestled with God. Amen. Hallelujah.